So this video is going to show us how to make a housing joint for the clock. Or just generally to know how to make a housing joint. Now, a housing joint traditionally is used for making shelves. So we're doing it so it's standing vertically up. But what you would usually have is two sections um, the, of either side of a shelf and then the section that goes across and the housing joint would be the section that goes in the middle and the gap. Um, but for this for this situation, we're using it to try and create the up section for the stand. Now you'll notice at the moment that my I'm using a piece of uh, timber, which is 15 centimeters or 150 millimeters long. And I push my finger tightly up against the edge of the piece of wood so that I know that the metal ruler is level with the piece of wood. And I'm going to find the middle. So I'm going to put a dot somewhere in the middle. So if the piece of wood is 150 millimeters long, then halfway would be 75 millimeters long. So I'm looking for 7.5 centimeters or 75 millimeters. Do you just check that the piece of wood is 150? Because if it isn't, just half whatever distance it is. So if it's only 145, obviously just half that distance instead. But just check the distance first before you start halving the distance on that. Okay, put a dot. I'm going to pick up a tri square. Now, the tri square, you'll notice, is very important that this part, which is called the stock, is pushed firmly up against the edge of the piece of wood. If it's not, it means that this section, which is the blade, won't be at 90 degrees. So you do need to make sure that you've got it pushed firmly up against level across the whole bit on the edge. And then the blade sits at 90 degrees and you slide it along until you find the dot on the piece of wood. And then just draw a line along. Now it's important to mark down the sides as well. So that when you're sawing, you can make sure that you check that you're sawing straight down the line. OK, so I'm going to put a dot on the side that's in line with the line that I just drew. And then I'm going to put the, the tri square on the edge of the piece of wood. And then I'm going to mark down the piece of wood. So I mark both sides in line with the line and then put my tri square on. And then make sure again it's firmly up against the piece of wood and then draw straight down on the other side. Now, what I'm going to do is I have got my bench hook, which is positioned in the vise. So this part of the hook is clamped into the vise. And then this part of the bench hook here is um, to stop the piece of wood from moving around. So I push with my thumb up against this part of the hook and then I can then start cutting through. I just have to hold it firmly in place. You can see it I'm lining up my just showing you what I've done there. So you can see I line up the edge with this sorry the section I want to cut through with this edge and it just helps to keep my saw straight. Now, I'm pulling back to start with. So I usually pull back three times. Let's have a look. One, two, three. So pull back three times. And all it does is it creates a little groove in the wood, which then hopefully when I saw it, it'll follow that little groove. And I also had the um, saw at a, an angle, a 45 degree angle-ish. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm almost going to be sawing downhill. The saw cuts on the forward motion, so you push forwards and it cuts, but the first three bits or the first three cuts, I usually cut on the backwards motion just to help me align it. But you'll see that I cut in the full pushing forwards. You'll also hopefully see if I go on. I'm just checking to see if it's cut through a bit. That my index finger is on the right hand side of the saw. Um, I have to make sure that my fingers are out of the way of the saw blade, but they're also clamping here against the edge of the bench hook. And my palm is kind of pushing against the piece of wood 
to make sure it doesn't move around. You can clamp this down if you want to. If you're struggling to hold it, just get a G clamp or a quick release clamp and just clamp the piece of wood down so it doesn't move around. Push through. Keep checking. So you see my head was overlooking to see if I was sawing properly straight down the line. So you just have to keep checking it. Push forwards, gently back. Push forwards, gently back. Now, the other thing to bear in mind is my arm is perfectly line running right the way through. So the power is going straight through the saw line and my head is directly above the saw blade, uh, above the shoulder of the saw. So that I can see either side of the saw. If I close one eye, I should be able to see one side of the saw blade. If I close the other, I should be able to see the other side. So it's got to be firmly positioned. Okay. Now, the next section is to first off just sand down any rough sections from the sawing. So that's a sandpaper board. And all it is is a piece of wood with a bit of sandpaper stuck down onto it so it's easier to use. Um, and you just kind of then sand down any rough sections. This obviously helps prevent splinters. Now you'll see I'm sharpening my pencil to make sure it's really nice and sharp because I've got to do some detailed marking out and the pencil needs to be really sharp to, to make sure that I don't end up making the joint too too wide. It helps to have a really sharp pencil. So it's always worth having a sharpener with you. Now at this stage, I'm going to use the one piece of wood as a template for marking on the other piece of wood to so get exactly the right thickness of the wood. So what I've done is I place the piece of wood along the grain. The grain is the lines running along the piece of wood. And I positioned the piece of wood on top of it centrally. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it and then mark either side of the piece of wood. Put my thumb on the top and then just mark either side. Okay. Now, the next thing to do is I'm going to find the middle because I want to uh, cut down to the middle and then chisel away um, the middle section. So I'm going to find the halfway point on the piece of wood along the um, section that's been cut. So the width is usually about 18 millimeters of this type of wood. It's six by one. And then I then put my thumb against it, press onto that and then mark the halfway point. Now, I'm then going to use this tool, which is called the marking gauge. And this bit is also called the stock. It's the same as this bit's called the stock. And it's used again to push up against the piece of wood to make sure it doesn't move around. It has to be pushed firmly up against the piece of wood there. And this little pin, which is called the spur, should then be set perfectly in line with the dot that you've drawn. Um, and then you can use it to help you mark a line across, parallel line across. I loosen the thumb screw and it allows you to move the stock back and forth along the marking gauge and line up the spur. Okay, tighten the thumb screw when you're happy and then what you do is, as you can see, this dot needs to push, be pushed fairly up against a piece of wood and then you drag it gently along. Don't have it vertical, have it at an angle of about 40 degrees and don't push in too deep. Just, just gently bring it along the wood to mark a little line along. The line should be parallel. Of course, if you don't feel comfortable using this, you know, obviously it's not as good, but you could just use a ruler to find the middle. And if you mark it in two places, you could draw a line across. But it's always good to try and use the tools that properly that we've got. Okay, and I've marked 
two little dots and I'm going to use the tri square just to make sure that when I saw I'm going to be sawing vertically straight down so you can see at this point you mark it off. And then repeat on the other side. So two little dots. Line it up. Make sure again the stock is perfectly against the piece of wood. And then just mark straight down. And then you will see good habits get into is you scribble the section that's called the waste, which is the section that's going to be taken away and be chucked in the bin eventually the way. That's why it's called the waste. Sometimes when you do certain joints, you end up cutting the wrong bit away because you forget which sections you need to cut. Very important, you mark the waste. Okay, so it's marked out ready for cutting, and then in a second, I'm going to go on and cut the next section. Okay. So the next section is to um, saw down the line to the halfway marker on both sides. And I'm going to use this tool, which is called an engineer's vise. Now, I don't have to use an engineer's vise. I could put it up against the bench hook and saw through there, or I could clamp it down to the table with a G clamp or a quick release clamp, and that might help me hold it in position. I just find this the best way of holding it in position as I'm sawing and you'll notice that I clamp the engineer's vice down to the table with a G clamp so that the engineer's vice doesn't move around and then clamp it in the little gap and then again you'll see me pull back three times hopefully yeah just to get the initial position now the other thing to bear in mind here is that if I saw exactly on the line because the saw blade has a thickness of one millimeter, it will actually, whatever is sawn is removed and it's turned into sawdust. So I don't want to saw exactly on the line because I'll end up losing some of the section I want to keep because it'll chew it up and turn it into sawdust. So I always saw on the waste side of the line, which means the section, the side of the line that you've scribbled on, not exactly on the middle of the line. And that comes very important, especially if you used a saw blade that was a lot thicker because you can get saw blades that are four or five millimeters thick half a centimeter thick and if you saw exactly on the line you'll lose a lot off the section you want to keep so you need to make sure you always get into the habit of sawing on the waist side of the line so in this case the waist is this side of the line and when i come to this bit the waist will be this side of the line so just be wary if you want your joint to fit comfortably and tightly snug so it's a strong joint you need to make sure that you put on the waist side of the line keep checking it to make sure you don't store too deep you don't want to make the wood weak so you're only storing to halfway so stop when you get to the halfway marker and you have to level out your saw to make sure it is halfway and again pull back three times to get the initial mark keep checking make sure you're going straight an angle to start with and start leveling your saw up. So start straightening your saw up level. Keep checking it, make sure that you go straight down. You'll see at this point, I've rotated the engineer's vice around. And I'm clamping it back to the table. This is because I'm ready for the chiseling and I don't want to chisel into my body. So if I'm chiseling sideways, it means that I'm not going to be chiseling into my body. Now, you will notice with a chisel that there is a little angle on the tip of the chisel called the bevel. Very important, that section. It's used as a it's used as two things it's used as a wedge to wedge wood away it's also used as a lever to help lever wood away so certain times you need to use it at the wedge and certain times you, use, you need to use it as a as a as a lever so what i'm going to do is because of this section is not very big i'm going to start directly in the middle i'm going to make sure that my chisel that i've chosen is 
ideally the same size as the gap I'm chiseling away, but if not, make sure you choose one slightly smaller than the gap that you're chiseling away. If you choose one too big, you'll end up taking away the sections that you want to keep these two bits because you will struggle to, to make it to stop that from happening. So just make sure that you place, you choose the right chisel. Place my chisel vertically on the wood. And I'm going to hit down at least three or four times firmly. You'll see I've gone all the way along the line. So I have to do it again. I've gone all the way along the line. And then I'm going to push down, put my palm on the back of it, push down firmly, and I'm going to pull back where the bevel is. And the bevel's going to act like a lever, and then this section is going to pop off. Not quite working yet. Oh, we go, it's starting to. I'm having to go a bit deeper because I needed to go a little bit deeper to be able to for the for the lever to work. So I tapped it down a bit deeper, and then I levered it by pulling back along the bevel, and this big chunk came out. Now, what you're going to do next, you're going to make sure that the bevel is down, so it's bevel side down, flat side up. Place your chisel at an angle, like so. And I'm going to tap it at the back of the, at the top of the, the chisel with a mallet. And effectively what it's going to do is kind of like a wedge. It's going to wedge the wood away. OK, then what you're going to do is you're going to again place it down a bit deeper so you get to the halfway marker. Repeat the same process. Wedge away the other side. Be really careful not to go too deep. Now to tidy it up, you don't need the mallet too much as long as you've got down roughly to level. If you place your uh, chisel at an angle and you slide it along, you should be able to remove just smaller sections, just very thin slithers of the wood. Just be careful at all times, you don't put your hand in front of the chisel. If your hand's in front of the chisel, you could slip easily and stab yourself in the hand, which happens very often. I'm going to tighten my G pump up because it's moving around a bit. And repeat on the other side. That ball has to be down, otherwise the chisel will start to cut, start to dive down into the wood, and uh, you'll have to take the wood away. So bevel that down. That's angry. The way, and if you're struggling to push it, use your mallet to, to uh, remove any tough sections. Okay, when you're happy, it's level. Check to see if it fits just by pushing it in. Don't be tempted to um, hit it with a mallet because you'll split your piece of wood in two. So do make sure that you're careful that you don't try and force it. If you need to remove a little bit more or file a section away or sand a little bit, then do so. Don't force the piece of wood in, otherwise you'll have to start again from scratch. Um, and if you find that when you push down one side, the other side lifts up and you push down that side and then this side lifts up, it must mean you've got like a little hill in the middle and you need to just chisel away the middle bit a bit more so it, so it fits level with your... Um, piece of wood. OK, at this stage it's complete. I just need to glue it down. So I'm going to use a brush for this. It's PVA wood glue. Um, do make sure after you finish you give your brush a really good clean at the sink or in some water, otherwise it will not work anymore. My brush will be useless. Make sure you brush en enough glue on firmly on the sides as well as on the base and also the lid goes back on firmly on the glue after you've finished. Otherwise, it um, will dry up and it won't work. OK, so place your glue in, make sure it's level. Push down firmly. And then to speed up the drying process, I'm just going to heat the area. Don't directly heat too much, otherwise it, like it, it, will, it could almost have the opposite effect, which melts the glue. So you need to just warm the area so hopefully it's... Uh, 
gradually just uh, start to dry the glue out. Otherwise, just leave it on it, last turn. And it will be fully dry an hour. It should be fully, fully dry in 24 hours. So all different glues do say different time scales on them. So just have a look. It also matters if it's a sunny, hot day, it will dry a lot quicker. If it's a cold, moist day, then it will dry a lot slower. So it does depend on the temperature. Now at this stage, I'm using a surf plane, just plane down any sections that are hanging. You've got to be careful with a surf plane because it can chew up your wood, especially the edges. I'm going to finish off with a bit of all-purpose filler. Now, if I was going to keep this the wood colour, I'd use a wood filler, it's like a brown wood filler. Because I know I'm going to be painting it, I'm going to be using an all-purpose filler, which is also for wood, uh, plaster and all sorts of other materials. I'm using like a little spray, I'm actually using a glue spreader there to spread the glue and push it into the gaps and scrape off the excess. And you can see I'm then wiping the excess back into the tub so it doesn't get wasted. So you shouldn't see loads of filler. A lot of it should be scraped back. The only fill you should see is where the gaps are, just to tidy up any sections where it's a little bit untidy. Okay. 